Can you pull back plays that you've drawn up for Satterfield? Uh, a handful. <laughs> so far, only one's been used. <laughs> when, what was that conversation like um, with them putting that on your radar just with everything that happened to Barrett? Uh, I think it was Thursday morning. Thursday, yeah. I think it was either Thursday morning or Wednesday morning. Um, uh, T9 actually just texted us like this old, old video of the, the same play that we ran. And we were kind of joking around. He's like, nope, that's you and Judy. I said, okay. So we went out there, ran it like t once or twice, and then called it good, looked good. We were excited to run it in the game. It was a lot of fun going out there and, you know, getting the block for a touchdown. Coach Roll talked about the championship mindset he thought you guys had. What's the key to carrying that forward, and what have you seen from guys as you start to try to do that this week? Well, I think the standard was, you know, met or set even higher on Saturday. Uh, and, you know, what's great is that everyone now gets to see that standard. Um, and, you know, everyone knows what it takes on uh, during the week for in practice uh, to get to that type of preparation for the game. I mean, uh, the offensive coaches were, this is the first time the offensive coaches came to us, or our coaches saying, hey man, those defensive guys on scout were freaking flying around today making plays and, you know, just being aggressive and getting them better and better. And the same thing, I mean, our scout offense has done a great job all year, you know, getting us ready. Uh, I think that's why we've been pretty, pretty dominant on defense. Uh, and, you know, you just got to continue to try to exceed that standard every, every practice, every day. As a guy from old Pac-12 country, what's been your experience with UCLA and, and I guess with this team in particular, what do you see from their offense? Yeah, you know, uh, Pac-12 is good football. You know, I know uh, when I would break it down, you know, in high school, they were more of like a passing league type of deal. Um, but yeah, no, their offense, you know, they got good running backs, good tight ends. Uh, you know, they got a good front. QBs are both mobile and, and can throw the ball as well. You know, got good, uh, great vision. I'm excited to uh, you know go more in depth. You know, this morning we got to kind of learn a little bit of their tendencies and and, and kind of uh, start to go in, into depth about them. So that's what today will be about uh, to learn a little bit more. When Jamari's playing like he did Saturday, and even MJ, how different is this front look? Especially if you're playing a team that had one of the best rosters in college football last week. Yeah, I mean, like like you said, when those two decide to play the way they played, uh, I mean, who who's going to block who, right? I mean, if you don't. You know, you know, worry about you know the interior guys. Then you got, you know, you leave the edge guys to be vulnerable. But if you worry about the uh, edge guys, then you leave the interior to be vulnerable type of t uh, type of deal. So it, it's just I think it goes to show how, you know, it's slash and attack type of deal that can happen, uh, especially when we're all, you know, playing the way that we played on Saturday. What is the key tie to to living up to that standard to picking up where you left off on a week by week basis? It's just that it's the locker room. Uh, you know, it's the guys, it's just older guys, but it's also, you know, everybody in that locker room uh, making sure that, you know, even even myself as an older guy, like I've told the younger guys, like, I hope you would get on me if I'm not, you know, holding the standard or meeting the standard uh, the same way I would get on you because I'm not doing it out of spite. I'm not doing it because, you know, it, it, I enjoy it or I'm angry. I, I do it because I love you and I want you to get better and I want you, you know, to produce for this team so you can go on and, you know, have a better career than I did here. And, and, you know, I think we're finally starting to see the tipping point of this team going in these last four games. How do you use that mentality knowing, like, outside of the team, fans are thinking about that sixth win, getting to a bowl game, these kind of external goals, too, that are obviously within the team. But how do you maybe stay focused over this next month knowing there's a lot of outside pressure, but you have that internal pressure, too, to meet – the goals that you have as well yeah we, we know it's important to get that sixth win um and you know i think you know we all want the same thing uh but to like answer your question how we're going to keep that mentality is like uh just focusing on one game like and not like trying to jump jump ahead in the weeks or you know overlooking you know an opponent or that type of deal that kind of already happened to us uh, this year and you know and that starts this week so I'm going to treat, you know, the same great game preparation I did for last week against Ohio State against the UCLA Bruins. Uh, and I know the rest of the guys are going to do that as well. And it just comes down to, you know, one-on-ones, our 11 guys going out there and competing against their 11 guys.
Peter just... Wright was just in here. He seems like he has a really joyful personality. How have you seen him just blend in to, you know, do what he's done in a short amount of time, really? Yeah, you know, no, Sierra was, was really quiet when he first got here. But as he's come out of his shell, you know, I'm kind of giving the nick, nickname Hollywood because, uh, you know, just kind of get jab him a little bit. Uh, but to finally see him, you know, become part of part of the guys, part part of our group, and then I mean, just excel and, and show that you know he's he's supposed to be out there on that field making big plays and showing up on game day. What did you learn last year from the Michigan State loss that you can carry into this year going against a team whose record doesn't tell the entire story? You know. What's dangerous about this game is like UCLA has nothing to lose compared to as you know as we were last year against Michigan State, trying to get that six game win. Uh, so there's a lot, a lot of things to like that we've learned. Basically, kind of what I said earlier is just you know f focusing on them, making sure you know we learn everything we can about them, that game preparation, and going out there and not really you know playing their record, but playing them as as the men they are, as as the guys they are, and as the team they are. Hey, Ty, what have you seen from Willis? Uh, he got in the backfield, caused a fumble. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, he's he's the only one to have two uh, uh, sack fumbles, which is awesome. Uh, I've been probably the uh, the hardest one on Will uh, Willis this past uh, fall camp and season, just because I know you know how how great he's going to be as a player, uh, and I kind of want to get that you know mental toughness or, or kind of the idea uh, before I get out of here, uh, you know, that he can carry on throughout his career here. Uh, I'm just super excited for him. I'm so happy that he was able to go out there and you know produce like that for our team. Thank you.